Q&A mailbag coming at you on the 49ers Report. I am Chase Senior. Be sure to give me a follow on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore Senior. My DMs are open, so give me a follow, slide into those DMs, and let's talk some Niners football. Speaking of talking Niners football, appreciate this question coming in from Talent. I heard some really crazy rumor that I don't believe at all. It was that Trey Lance was reportedly sent home because he was beating out Jimmy G. What's your opinion on this strange rumor? I think if that was the case, because it has a lot of significance, we would find out about it and that would be made public. I have not seen that rumor. If you have better sources than I, maybe you should be hosting the 49ers report. But I'm not sure what to make of that rumor. I don't think it's necessarily true. Trey Lance needs all of the OTA, training camp, and mini camp reps that he can get. They're not going to send him home for playing well. That's just not how this business works. Let's move on to this question from Jay Moose. Do you think Trey Sermon will be RB3 or RB1? It depends on what happens with the injury situation. So if you're just joining us live here on the 49ers Report, or if you're watching us video on demand, you might already know about these injuries. If not, we'll get you caught up. Raheem Moster has gone down with a knee injury, not expected to be serious. He will be back for training camp. Jeff Wilson out with a knee injury as well. He's going to be out for the next four to six months. So now the top two running backs on the depth chart aren't available right now. Trey Sermon has a great opportunity at stake to really prove himself as a third-round pick and possibly claim that RB1 job if he does end up producing and playing really well. So I think he's in the mix for RB1. He could even slide down to RB3. That is probably the most intriguing training camp battle that I'm going to be watching when training camp does end up happening. Let's move on to this question from Adrian Belgrave. Any news on the new defensive back rookies, Demo and Thomas? So you're talking about Diamador Lenore, Diamador Lenore excuse me, as well as Ambry Thomas. Um, the word out of rookie minicamp as well as OTAs is that Diamador Lenore and Ambry Thomas have been really impressive. And the 49ers have to be ecstatic about that because they used pretty high and valuable draft picks on both of those guys. Now, are they going to be starters? I'm not sure about that, but moving forward, I think the plan and what the 49ers are thinking by bringing back Verrett, Mosley, Williams, and Johnson, like those are all veteran guys, right? And at some point, especially if they produce this upcoming season, you're going to move on from those guys. One, they're either going to become too old, two, maybe too expensive, so the thought process, I'm sure, from John Lynch as well as Kyle Shanahan is that by drafting Diamador Lenore and Ambry Thomas, we're going to groom those guys right now under some of those veterans so that maybe this year or maybe next year or the year after that, those guys are going to be ready to ball out. Who's your favorite current 49ers player? Man, this roster is stacked with some headline names. Let me know in the comment section down below who your favorite current 49ers player is on this roster. Start spamming the chat with as many names as you can come up with. Current players though, not past players. So that is the big key here. Name your favorite current 49ers player. I'm gonna go with Fred Warner. Wanna to get to this question from the RMB bros. Which 49ers defensive player do you think will have the most sacks this season? The no-brainer answer is Nick Bosa. Nine-plus sacks as a rookie two years ago. I think he would have been a double-digit sack last year if he didn't suffer that torn ACL early in the season in the Meadowlands, which was really, really unfortunate because I think he was going to be one of the best edge, edge rushers across the entire league. So I'm going to go with Nick Bosa. Uh, word is he looks really healthy. He looks really strong. He tweeted out last week soon, so that tells me he's feeling good about himself as well. I think he's poised for a monster year three. I think he has all pro potential. I think he could make it to a Pro Bowl. I think he could be a double-digit sack guy and really burst onto the scene this year coming off that torn ACL. How about this question from Mysis Lee? What will the Niners' defense look like under the new regime? Well, if you're watching us on the 49ers Report Live, we did talk earlier about what D'Amico Ryans expects 
If you're watching us now, video on demand, here's what D'Amico Ryans had to say to the media about what he expects from his unit as the first-year defensive coordinator, and I absolutely loved what he had to say. Our defense will be a fast, attacking, aggressive defense. I want guys to play fast. I want guys who are smart. I want guys who are going to play physical. I want to be known as an attacking defensive line. Our D-line is going to attack. Our linebackers and secondary are going to play with base fundamentals. We're going to play off of our defensive line. We're going to allow our D-line to get off the ball and attack, we're going to clean up things behind them. But we will be a more aggressive and more attacking defense. So, Mises, that's what D'Amico Ryans expects from his defense. They're going to pin their ears back. They're going to rely on their strengths, which is really that front and they're going to expect those guys to get after the quarterback and generate pressure on the quarterback. And if that's the case, it takes so much pressure off the back end. If that 49ers defensive front is generating pressure, those guys in the back end, they can roam a little bit. They can take more chances as far as trying to get interceptions and pass breakups, and it just allows them to relax and not play uptight. And when you're playing uptight and you're lacking uh, confidence as a cornerback, it's not good. You can get roasted. So that's a preview as to what you can you can expect from D'Amico Ryan's defense, and I think they're going to be a really, really solid unit here in 2021. Scion, how is Elijah Mitchell doing in OTAs? He's doing really well, and he has emerged as a pass-catching option out of the backfield. Here's the crazy thing about Elijah Mitchell, though. When he was at Louisiana, he barely was used as a pass-catching option. He played in under 50 career games and had under 50 career receptions. But especially in those first rookie minicamps, Kyle Shanahan was experimenting a lot with him as a guy who was coming out of the backfield on wheel routes as well as bubble screens as well, and he was doing a really good job in the pass game. So I think the versatility there really will prove to be valuable for Elijah Mitchell in trying to make this roster with a really crowded backfield, and he's doing really good so far. I can't wait to see what he brings to the table. He's a 4-3 guy who's very, very dynamic. Let's pivot to this question from Danny Dots. Do you think... Who do you think, excuse me, will break out for the 49ers this season? Funny that you say that, because on the 49ers report, I gave you five breakout candidates who I think are going to flourish and really have monster campaigns in 2021. That video is available right now on the 49ers report. So after you're done watching this video, show that video some love because I broke down five guys who I think are going to be able to break out in 2021. It includes Brandon Ayuk. It includes Javon Kinlaw, as well as Trey Sermon. As for those two other guys, watch that video to find out. That's why you subscribe also to the 49ers Report because we're doing something here at Chat Sports that nobody else is doing here on YouTube and in terms of 49ers coverage. We bring you the latest news and rumors, free videos every single day. We go live 6 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Pacific every single Thursday. We do live Q&A mailbags where I answer all of your questions. We do all of that and more. Even on some of these mailbags, I shotgun beers when I take super chat questions and y'all super chatted me saying, wear that 49ers shirt. I went out, I copped one, and I'm wearing a 49er shirt because like you guys answer the question and answer the bell, I answer it as well. So turn on those notifications and subscribe to the 49ers report by either hitting that big red button down below or go to youtube.com slash 49ers TV. This question coming in from Wet Noodle 187 thanks my guy, one surprise move that people are not talking about. Do you mean throughout free agency or this offseason? I think... Everything that they did in the secondary was awesome. Like, to get Jason Verrett at that deal, I thought it was awesome. Like, I think he could be one of the top outside shutdown cornerbacks across the entire NFL. And maybe locally, people saw what Jason Verrett did last year, and they know that he's a really good player. But nationally, I don't think Verrett and Kaywan Williams, who's also back, on a minimal price tag, I don't think a lot of people realize that these guys are really good players and could be one of the best cornerback duos across the NFL. Talent. D'Amico Ryans has stated that he thinks Javon Kinlaw will take a huge leap in year two. What do you predict his stat line to be? He's never been a huge sack guy. Like He wasn't a monster sack guy at South Carolina when he was playing there in the college ranks. Last year, yes, he had that return for a touchdown against the Los Angeles Rams. He was able to flash so much last year as a physical specimen. 
And I think that's why he bodes well for being a breakout candidate in for 2021. D'Amico Ryan thinks he's going to break out. I think he's going to break out as well. Last year, 33 tackles, one and a half sacks, four tackles for loss. Let's say that in year two, Javon Kinlaw, to answer your question, puts up a stat line of around 55 tackles, five sacks, and seven tackles for loss. That's my prediction for Javon Kinlaw's 2021 stat line. Let's move ahead in this mailbag with this question from Lamont Barham. Do you think our linebackers will blitz more? According to what D'Amico Ryan said, he wants to rely on the defensive line to generate, pass, uh, to generate press, pressure excuse me, and to generate a pass rush. So if the defensive line is not able to generate a pass rush, maybe D'Amico Ryan is going to dial up some front seven blitzes. But there will be no need to dial up front seven blitzes if the front four is getting home. Now, D'Amico Ryans did say, I want the 49ers defense to be aggressive. We are going to attack. I think he's going to draw up some blitz packages. I'm not sure exactly how he's going to devise those, but there's certainly the talent there to make some noise in the backfield with Fred Warner, Aziz Al-Shahir, and Dre Greenlaw. I want to get to this question from Mary491. Chances Nick Bosa wins Comeback Player of the Year. It could happen, but with a Comeback Player of the Year, I think it has to be a candidate like Jalen Hurd, who has missed the last two seasons with, you know, a back neck injury as well as that torn ACL last year. He was a high round draft pick a couple years ago coming out of Baylor and hasn't played at all in his first two years, whereas Nick Bosa was one of the best edge rushers as a rookie back in 2019, only missed last year and played two games with that torn ACL. I don't know if he's going to be comeback player of the year. I think that would go to a guy like Jalen Hurd. I do think that Nick Bosa is going to come forward with a double-digit sack season, which is why I want to ask this question to the faithful watching right now. How many sacks do you think Nick Bosa will have in 2021? I'm going to go ahead and type my 10 and a half in the comment section, but let me know how many sacks you think Nick Bosa will have this upcoming season. I'm going double-digit sack numbers all the way for Nick Bosa. He's an absolute baller. If you want to talk Niners, you want to hit me with a question, you want to slide in my DMs, a couple ways for you to do that. My DMs are open both on Twitter and Instagram. And here's the good news. I made it easy for all of you. I have the same handle on both Twitter and Instagram, at Chase underscore Senior. Took over the 49ers report about a month ago. We're continuing to try to build this channel. And a lot of you have slid into my DMs, and we've talked Niners. I want to continue to answer your questions and chop it up a little bit. So give me a follow and DM me on Twitter and Instagram at Chase underscore senior. It's the same handle on both. Let's move ahead with this question from Niners for Life 49ers. I'm pretty sure he's a diehard 49ers fan. Do you think Jalen Hurd will play week one? Kyle Shanahan said at the onset of minicamp or OTAs that he expects Jalen Hurd to be ready for training camp. So that would put him in line.